I mean, there's the old cliche that it, boxing saved my life, but it is so true with, with, with some with some of them. Some of them haven't got a male mental around them or anything like that. They go down that gang route and boxing's just, um, I wouldn't say it's an escape so much because it gives you tools to, to live with for the rest of your life. I was at Fitzroy Lodge from when I was a kid, right through to an adult, a uh, young, young adult. And uh, then I left, and Adam must have joined a, a few seasons after me. Yeah. So he was there for, from then for years. I think, uh. Yeah, I left. I was at Foley Boxing Club. My trainer turned professional because I didn't have a coach. And he said, What club do you want to go to? And my dad boxed Fitzroy Lodge. And uh, I said, Fitzroy Lodge. So I used to get a train, because I was out in Surrey, I used to get a train from Tolworth to Waterloo, walk underneath the arches and that, go to the lodge. And stayed there for quite a long time, yeah. Yeah, I was at Tooting first for about five fights, five or six fights. And then I used to train in a pro gym, Freddie Hills, where who trained Kevin and Chrissy Finnegan and Tony Simpson, oh, Ken Buchanan, Marvin Agler trained there for when he fought Minter, so. Yeah, it's good to him. <laughs> <laughs> He's off. <laughs> oh, yeah, but then he brought me up to Fitzroy Lodge, like left me with Billy Webster and who else was up there? Mick Carney. But well, I got trained by a guy called Gordon White, Howard Rainey and people like that was up there, so yeah. You ready to go, Rob? Yeah. <laughs> you got tape, didn't you? Yeah. He went, he went to me, it was like a family being there. It wasn't like any other gym I've been to. We, um, <coughs> all the boxers, we went on holiday every year together. We went, done everything together, you know. It was a um, proper family. Still mates now, all this stuff. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd sort of like left Fitzroy Lodge, um, but I wouldn't, I was probably gonna give, give up boxing because um, I wouldn't go to another club. Uh, I, my heart was it'd be an amateur boxing. I met Fitzroy Lodge or nowhere, and Adam rang me. We was talking, and he said, well, "Do you fancy having a go to pros?" So I got him at Lodge, and I <coughs> went to go pro and all. Mm. Which was, stalker. Which was probably my style of training is probably is more suited to the pros. I would, you know. I'll be, I'll be on it. How it is. I'm not just saying I wouldn't have took him from the lodge if he was happily coaching there. I knew he'd had a break and all that. I knew he weren't going there. I didn't poach him on, I think, all right, Caswell. I don't think I poached him. <laughs> Give me a five and a Mars yeah. bar. Mickey wanted me a box, but I went in a war mode. In that. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna throw the towel in. <laughs> yeah, well, I retired from amateur boxing. I was getting a bit old. I was working nights at the post office. I had um, my children and stuff. I had to pay the mortgage and stuff like that. And I was finding it really hard to train. So I went into coaching, but I hated it. I didn't, not hated it, but. I didn't enjoy it. I was walking them to the ring and wishing I was boxing, and I went through a bit of a, a bad time, really. But I wanted a box still. I found it really hard, but it does go, doesn't it? It goes, but I mean, I wouldn't dream of getting in there now, do you know what I mean? But then I did find it hard at the time. And uh, so I was coaching at the phone, and then Mick Carney rang me up and said, Ed, I want you down the lodge, like, I might be able to get you a job. But I'd been at the post office for over 10 years because it fitted in with my boxing the hours and stuff. But when I stopped boxing, I was like, I didn't really want to be a postman. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but. Um, so yeah, I went up, I took a sabbatical, three year sabbatical, and went up the lodge and um, worked along active communities with Jim Atkinson and done like youth work through the lodge and ended up coaching there in the evenings and stuff. Yeah. So it all come together really well. I'll never look back really, because that's what I went on to do, youth work.
yeah, and it was just so lovely being able to transform some of these kids. And even the kids that were never going to box, they all got my time. You know, you don't, you don't just. There's a few of them who were better, obviously better fighting for sort of like on the way to national titles and things like that. And you give them as much time as you can. But even the kids who you just know they're never actually going to box, they're just down there treating it like a youth club. They still got, they still got my time. And and you, it'd be nice. You get some. You get like teachers coming into the club, or, or or the mums or dads coming up saying, "My kid has changed so much. You know, he's, he seems to be so happy when it, when he's down this club." So it was lovely to get that feedback, as well as watching some of them improve on their boxing skills, obviously. But yeah, mm. no one was bigger than the club there. You know, Fitzwell was like David A. Don't matter who it was, everyone was treated the same. That's how it should be. That's how much boxing there. <laughs> no, they didn't do them in them days. <laughs> when we used to take kids to shows and we and we go into. So, you know, you go into a cafe or something for something to eat, and you know they get they, they see you saying your pleases and your thank you. It's just good manners, and some of them are not used to that. They don't they don't mm. see that. So having that environment, um, it's, 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 it is it is a sort of lifesaver for some. But then you get others who just love boxing. You know, they're not they're not in the gangs. They was never in trouble or anything. Like Jermaine, you know, he's come from a good family, good school. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's it's, 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 it's all shapes and sizes, and there's. There's no, um, uh, how can I put it? Uh, you know, all, all the, you know, anybody. There's none of the racism. There's none of the, the you, you know, everyone's just. You're just a, you're just a club mate, and you, and you, you become best mates as well. It's a good shot. Yes, Rob's done it. Rob's done more than that. These kids, are even at Fitzroy Lodge, who are never going to go on to be professionals, never go on to box at a high level. But who are just part of the family as well, and you can match them, match them, you know, accordingly to their what they're like, their experience, and all that stuff, and get them through it, and they can enjoy it as much as someone who's right at the top. So, mm. you know what I mean? It's for everyone. Amateur boxing, we're professionals, obviously not, but the amateur boxing is for everyone. You normally notice it when they spar. That's 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 the sort of crunch thing. Like they come in, and you can watch it in their training. If they if they're giving up in training, then they're going to give up in the in, in in the ring. So you you can see the ones that you know you can get the kids that come in and and you know for want of a PC world they're they're overweight, um, they're unfit, but they really give their all. And you get another kid who's really fit, but gives up on a little bit of a. Like when you get giving them a burst of punches to do, you can spot yeah. that that inner determination, but nothing beats noticing it like getting, I don't, know, I don't want to sound like an old dinosaur, but then getting a punch in the face. That's yeah. when you sort of see whether someone's got the fight or flight in them. Mm. Um, and you can work with a kid who, who really wants it. Yeah, you know? me too, no, because I used to get, when I was first up there during the day, you get these big kids walking, 15, look like Auntie Josh, you know, like built like a brick shit house. And I go to me, oh, I've got one here, me. Like, and he go, Adam, come back to me when he's been punched in the face. Like, and he was always right. <laughs> I do be a spy and never see him again, but yeah, I think I'd still get excited if I see one like Andy Joshua come in. Look good on the bag and that, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Sit down rather than lean forward, yeah? Get the power in there. <laughs> That's the kiddie. Charlie Schofield's going on the deck. Chest, don't forget his six, three, six, four. First one here, bang, move the feet in, little tap up, knocks his head up, and then smack him with the right hand. That's the Anyone going pro, you should go into a pro gym and watch how the, how the big boys train, give you an idea of what it yeah. takes to get to get to them high levels. So that's all good. Yeah, we got, we got a young lad, Robert Caswell, just starting out, he's had one pro fight, lives in Chatham. 
comes to us. His first day here, <laughs> he had a move around Michael Cotton and got done with a body shot. He won't see him again, but he's come back. Mm. Come back continuously training, won his pro debut. So they're all like, you've got to be tough, innit? You wouldn't yeah. believe he was tough if you see him. He looks like a choir boy, but. Yeah, he looks like, yeah, he looks like a student. Tough. Yeah, yeah. And then we've got Romario, who's, who's just turned pro with us, and he's he's hard though, Romario. Yeah, he's talented, he's kid. Yeah, he's talented. Like a little well awake, um, can bat, can punch. And he holds his own in sparring with with all the with all the other boys mm. with Harlem and everything like that. So yes, we're still taking new ones on. So they're starting the journey, aren't they? So Jermaine's like the one they're looking up at, really, isn't it? Mm. But they all go yeah. Around so them. our stable, our pro boxers, um, they're all on what you call ticket deals. So they're all on small shows at the moment. So they have to be so strong-willed and have to just stick with it. A lot of them, I say Daniel Morley. He's on the verge of getting signed now. So I think they see what Jermaine's done, they realise they can do it. They just got to stick with it. But people don't realise how hard it is for these lads to go from ticket deals to get on telly. It's so hard. He's probably not earned a penny in his first 10, what, nine or whatever fights it was. You know what I mean? To get there. It's so hard for him to keep going. You see, so how many do you see start and they don't, mm. don't go through it, do they? No. no. Yeah, it's not easy. You've got to be right strong-willed, especially if you don't sell loads of those tickets. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the that's the hard, harsh reality of professional boxing. That's why when people do come to to Adam and um, talk about inquire about turning professional, he always sits them down and tells them the absolute truth. Yeah, I try and put them off, really. Yeah, because then they can't, you know, in a year's time go, well, you know, I didn't realise it was like this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah, he is a crap sport, really. It's horrible. That you know, side of that the business is horrible. Yeah. When I boxed, I was, everyone used to say I was too nice, but I used to pretend I was other people. I used to do all sorts of stuff before I boxed. Yeah, I used to get in there. It is, you can do it, it's quite easy. Mm. I mean, Mick was never nice. <laughs> Just getting in by people. <laughs> but he'd do that outside as well, so on the way to the ring. Though. I was what was known as a hungry fighter. Yeah. I, used to talk, I used to talk to all my opponents, my dad used to go, why are you talking to him? You're boxing him. I used to go, well, I like him. You shouldn't like him, you've got to hate him. But, I didn't really have that in me, that, but I still want to beat them when I'm in there, don't I? Yeah, yeah. 